By fortunate coincidence, the resulting design direction of the new S6 has more than the smidgen of iPhone about. But comparisons are the lowest form of flattery, or however the saying goes. Gone are the nasty plastics of Galaxy past. No faux leather finish as with a no here either. Instead, the S6 has a metal chassis, and glass covering the front and back. The fit and finish makes you want to use words such as chamfer, rounded and drilled, whatever they mean. While the S6 Edge gets a racy green finish to itself, the S6 gets a surfy blue. Both phones alternatively come in charcoal, white and gold, the finish is described by Samsung as jewel-like. Fortunately it's classier than it sounds. The metal edges are almost imperceptibly darker from the white version to the charcoal version. The glass back and the front screen edges curve slightly into the chassis, and there's a very thin bezel on either side of the 5.1 inches QHD Super AMOLED screen. Yep, no, 4K screen, but that was never the most desirable of the S6 rumors anyway. Despite the addition of all this glass and metal, the new S6 is lighter than the outgoing S5, albeit by only an imperial smidge. It feels solid and balanced, with a more traditional hand feel than the S6 Edge's sharp sides. The power button is situated in the center of the right-hand side of the phone, above the pin and socket type SIM tray, and the volume controls are high up on the left side. The top has only a Wii microphone hole and the ear center. There's much action on the bottom edge, with a headphone socket, microspender newly placed, power boosted speaker. Samsung say it's 1.5 more louder. It's got a lovely drilling, that speaker, but we dare say that HTC's twin front mount a boom sound setup will still be the choice of the boomtish social misfit. Of course the downside to that unibody shell, for Samsung fans, may be that there's no removable back panel a sacrifice for the new classy build. So no removable battery either, nor the ability to swap out your memory card. It's not like you get a much bigger battery either capacity is 2550 mAh, compared to 2600 mAh for the S6 Edge and 2800 mAh for the outgoing S5. But there's wireless charging built in, compatible with an optional Samsung charger and, claim FA, with the majority of wireless charge points in Starbucks, McDonald's, etc. Its cable charger apparently provides two hours of HD video playback for just 10 minutes of charging. The lack of Micros card slot may be an issue for some too. Still, the S6 will come with 32, 64 or 128 gigabytes of memory built in, and it's the new fangled UFS 2.0 Type 2. Or the faster to fill it up a cynical wolf would say, using his sharpest claw to tiddlywink his now redundant Micros collection into the bin. Less doom leaden data hounds might look to a product such as the Leaf Bridge to stay on top of their hoardage and backup needs. The camera lens on the back of the S6 protrudes. Forgivable, if it's optical image stabilization and low light loving f1.9 aperture hold up in real world testing. The front camera is 5MP, compared to 16MP round the back, but it also gets the big eye. Both are made slightly easier to use by some camera up tweaks that add text identifiers to the previously inscrutable on-screen icons. But, before you begin groaning about Samsung adding yet more depth to its Marmite effect touch with UI, there's good news. It was at pains to point out that it's taken out a lot of the unnecessary extra steps in the UI, there are now few confirmation dialogues, for example. That should make things faster. Or, more accurately, that should clear the way for the 64-bit processor to perform as its efficient 14 nanometers architecture suggests. Helped by 3 gigabytes of special LPDDR4 RAM, which Samsung says is 88% faster than the ridiculous RAM in the S5. There are lots of maze and shoals here, because while impressions can be formed about the look and feel of a phone quite quickly, OS and processor and camera testing take a longer look. And fewer Samsung X experiencing over one shoulder. We'll be getting a review sample very soon. But as an answer to the criticisms thrown at Samsung phones for the past few years, the S6 is a success. It's a desirable, flagship-feeling object. 
Were it not for the bendy screen smarts of the S6 Edge, we'd be disputing Samsung's enthusiastic use of the word innovation dash and no doubt Apple fans will be quick to shout copycat at any forum that will receive them. There's a danger, too, that the S6 will simply be the poor man's S6 Edge, we'd drop the S6 in a hot minute if the Edge was within $100 of it. Thanks for watching Tech Talk. Subscribe now for more videos.